Hi, you're watching Martial Reader. In the previous chapter, after defeating Feral, the King's Heritage chooses Wazi to be the next successor. Now on to the next part, in the Sacred Sanctum, four powerful persona are attending the funeral of Feral. Lucretia, the guild leader of the Sacred Sanctum, says her farewell to Feral and he may rest in peace since he has realized his true value. Then Fenrir the White Wolf King states that he never thought that Feral, a street thug would be able to collect enough to spare, and even have found the final ingredient they needed. Then Kamazot's king of maze-like caverns, Sanguine King, responds to Fenrir that nobody will think he is smart if he just state the obvious, to which made him angry, so he asks if he wants to fight him. While the conflict happened, Barbaro, the guild leader of the Tamer Alliance, calls Lucretia as owner, and asks if the final ingredient really has been confirmed, to which she responds that they have. Then she tells them that she needs to go, since the meeting is about to start, and they all must accomplish their part of the plan in the coming days, such as Kamazots will keep monitoring those people, and Barbaro will be handling the matters of other guilds, and she must report any movement of the Sword Saint. Then as Lucretia passed by Fenrir, he noticed he didn't get a mission, so he asks what about him, to which Kamazots lets out a small laugh and responds that he should just stay here and be a good guard dog and go make himself useful and take a piss on the ground to scare off any small animal. Fenrir had enough of disrespect, and he knows he shouldn't let this slide, so he started transforming, while insulting Kamazots, calling him a rat that learned how to fly, and he will carve some manners into that rat head of his, to which Kamazots didn't cower as he was about to transform too, and was even delighted to have a chance to teach a mutt a lesson. Now they are ready to go at each other's throats, but before this got out of hand, Lucretia pats Fenrir's head, and tells him, how can she forget him, and it is only because he is here that he can feel safe, he is her strongest shield, instantly diffusing his anger, as he thanks his owner, after that, she raises her chalice, and praises the demon god, and offer the pure despair from a soul, pouring blood into the jar, and inside it, is the sealed demon god Gollum's skull, and its unsealing conditions is a pure despair from ten thousand souls which is now completed, and the head of one who is pure of heart, and once they offer up the last ingredient, may demon god Gollum descend and usher a new era. At a later time, somewhere in the land of the dead, six columns stands tall, and with a corresponding colored staff placed to it, then a crow appeared and it lands on the violet staff, and it looks to the left, and looks to the right, then it asks his so-called friends if they are here, to which no one responds, so it transforms its beak into a large microphone shouting the meeting is starting, simultaneously the colored staff shines, and a hologram of the people who uses it, materializes their image. Zuzu, the crow, apostle of the land of the dead, guarding the seal of demon god Gollum's right leg, sees that little Sua is not coming again today, it expresses that it miss him so much, still, he just decides to continue with the business, and start by taking a look at everyone's progress, as he transforms into another creature. The village head, Broccoli, expresses thoughts, saying he still doesn't like this place where they can't hide anything. Still, now their progress is now displayed in front of them, for everyone to see. It seems like everyone has made progress compared to last time. Zuzu suddenly sighs, as he wonders how Sua is doing on his end. Still, it's okay. They must believe in their friend. Then he transformed again, while saying he believes they will be able to welcome their master back to this world very soon. Then he asked them if any of them noticed anything from the prophecy. The two immediately says no, but Lucretia is being extra. She raised both of her hands in the air as she exclaimed, that the sky will announce his arrival, the earth shall give birth to clouds, when ten thousand lives gather together, the legendary brave shall appear. And then she asked to have such an absurd criteria, will the prophecy ever be really fulfilled, and compared to the legendary brave that only exists in the prophecy. Their biggest obstacles are still the Sword Saint and the Elemental King, and if they can get rid of them, no one will be able to stop them from reviving their lord, Demon God Gollum. Broccoli expresses his scorn and responds, that only if she knew the true power of those two, she wouldn't make it sound so easy. He adds that, before they inherit the power of Lord Gollum, even if they attack them together, they wouldn't be able to fight the Sword Saint, not to mention, there'd still be the Elemental King. What's more? Sua hasn't appeared for over 30 years, they don't even know if he's still alive, or what happened to the seal he was in charge of, so, 
Before they inherit a portion of Lord Gollum's power, he suggests that none of them mess with the Sword Saint or Elemental King. Zuzu transformed again, and he responds that, Prudence can sail a boat for 10,000 years. As village head Broccoli said, they should be careful with their actions, but there's no need to be too tense, and asks him why don't he stay behind and play later. But before he could respond, Lucretia responds that she suddenly remembers that village head Broccoli were defeated by the sword saint before, so if any mental demons are plaguing him, she can help him cleanse them, while she laughs mockingly. This made Broccoli agitated, so he asks her as a threat, why don't he kill his way into her sacred sanctum then, and why doesn't she mind her business, a group of trash that only knows how to drag others down. Zuzu diffuses the situation, by telling them to please don't argue since they are all friends here. Then Pascal asks Broccoli, if his assumptions were right, he should be able to open the seal in a month or two with his current speed, and once he inherits Lord Gollum's powers, he might be able to defeat the Sword Saint. To which Zuzu transforms again and responds that's not something they can be sure of. From what he knows, the divine tree that Broccoli spent so much time nurturing was ruined. It can't help him absorb the magic of Lord Gollum anymore. Of course, he also can't help the newbie braves change their class, so no one's helping him collect materials. This made him glare at Zuzu furiously, to which Zuzu was surprised and transformed, as he asks if he said something wrong. Lucretia didn't let the opportunity to mock Broccoli pass by, as she tells village head Broccoli that what happened was a huge shame. Maybe he will be the one who ends up dragging them down, and maybe he just have to hand over the Tempest grasslands to her, as she laughs mockingly. He responds that he doesn't need her to stick her nose in the Tempest grasslands. This old man naturally has his own solution and if she dares try anything funny, he will ensure she will end up in pieces. After that, one by one disappeared, to which Zuzu was surprised since he thought they would stay behind and play with him. Then he looks at Pascal, the only one left. He responds that he couldn't either, because he still has many things to do. Zuzu pleads that it will be just for a little while, but he disappeared also. Zuzu could only sigh. Now they were all gone again, and just when he finally got to see his friends again, Ever since little Sua went missing, no one had stayed to play with him anymore, and he wonders if he was alright. He suddenly got an idea. Although they left, he can just make his own friends, so he shout them to come out and play with him. So they did. Meanwhile, after leaving the meeting, Broccoli opens his eyes, decides to walk, and curses at those who doubt him. He states that he will show them that he is not useless without his tree, so he swings his staff, but it missed his target. Still, with his fiery eyes, he is determined to catch them himself, so he shouts at the snails to stop moving while he was struggling to catch it. The newbie sees him pathetically hunt the snail. The one with horns asks his friend if they should help him, to which he exclaimed no, since he refused to help them change class when they lacked just one snail daddy shell last time. The horn kid has heard he was once a super powerful expert, but even he couldn't escape old age. He now has to spend so much effort to kill a single snail, to which the friend responds. That's why he said, what's so great about being a brave? They might as well just find a way to make money and get rich. After that they just leave, while the village head is getting beat up on the cheeks by the daddy snail. As he was getting eaten up by the snail daddy, he was thinking about his choices. When he first chose the seal, he thought it would be easy. Who would have thought that cursed stone would make it so that he will be severely weakened whenever he leave its side? And to think he would fall so low, with humiliation and will power, he managed to beat up the snail. Still, he also sustained injuries, and now he is so tired. He used to be one of the strongest people, and to think that just a bunch of snails can do this to him now. So he curses at Wazi since it was him who ruined this old man's master plan, as he threatens him in his mind. If he catches him again, he plans on devouring him whole. Meanwhile, in the Mushroom Kingdom, the four can be seen resting at the top of the walls. Wazi asks what exactly is going on, to which Bayou call him Majesty, and responds that, as he can see, the Mushroom Kingdom is slowly recovering, while Piggy is playing on the side. Wazi clarifies that, what he meant is, how did they get here all of a sudden? All he did was think about it, and they were suddenly here, as he asks himself if this is an ability that all the kings have, since he only gave a thought and that ability suddenly activated by itself. Meanwhile, Kage was still being an idiot and couldn't accept reality, as he asks how can a mere mushroom monster become the king of the entire mushroom race.
there must be a mistake, so he relaunched an attack. While Wazi is in deep thought about his ability and has decided to try activating it again, so when Kage slices downward at him, Wazi has activated his domain. They were teleported instantly to a new location, making Kage think Wazi is a sly person, as he was plunged into a pond. However, still, this didn't stop him, as he tells Wazi that him acknowledging him as the new king, the possibility is 0%. As he launched another strike at him, Wazi activates the domain again, so they teleported to a new location, which Kage lands head first again. Bayu asks His Majesty Wazi to please stop playing around and suggest to return to the place from a while ago, since there are some official matters she must inform him about. Wazi understood, and he basically grasped how to use this ability anyway, so they teleported to where they were a while ago, face planning Kage again, which Wazi didn't intend to, as they were clueless why Kage always lands on his face. Now Wazi knows that, Domain, allows him to freely travel within his domain, the Mushroom Kingdom. As for the other abilities, they're all passive, such as, King's Majesty, an ability exclusive to the rulers of a race. All monsters of the same species will listen to his orders, but he cannot force them to kill themselves. And then Race Mastery, all racial abilities' effectiveness increased by 100%. Mastery speed of racial abilities is also significantly increased, and the reverence strengthening the king will get stronger as the number of monsters who worship them increases. Meanwhile, in the background, Kage is still struggling. To him this is impossible, while he crawls to Wazi, but then Bayu tells him to stop embarrassing himself, and asks if he didn't see how Wazi teleported them around the Mushroom Kingdom. That was an ability even the previous king hadn't mastered. So to say, the king's heritage did not make a mistake. No matter how unwilling he is, he is now their new king. Kage responds that he knows, but all the previous mushroom kings had their king form. But this guy, he has already become the king, so he wonders why he still look like a mushroom monster. And he asks how can he lead their race if he looks like this. Listening to their conversation, Wazi realized that the stupid Mushroom Uncle is right, since he is now the Mushroom King, and his level has reached 60. He wonders why haven't he evolved. Now that he has obtained the King's heritage, shouldn't he evolve into a super powerful Mushroom King form? So he asks the system if there is some kind of bug. The system answers that, because the player class changed into a Mushroom Brave, he can no longer evolve, and his monster form has been locked as Mushroom Monster. However, because he received the King's heritage, a weird situation has been created where the player evolved into the Mushroom King species, but still kept the appearance of a Mushroom Monster. Wazi suddenly remembered that he had sacrificed his ability to evolve in exchange for becoming a Brave. So, that's why he still looked like this even though his species changed to a Mushroom King. And as he was talking to the system, behind him, Kage is mocking Wazi, because Kage could only see him mumbling to himself and asks Bayu if does that look like a king material to her, but she ignored him, and went over to Wazi, and perhaps, this was all destined, she asked his majesty, if did he also get hit by the shooting stars, Wazi was confused on what she meant by shooting stars, so he asks, which she clarifies that back then, when they were looking for the new mushroom king, they were hit by a bright light that fell from the sky, after they woke up, they gained the ability to transform into humans, now he realizes what shooting stars meant. While Kage assumes that it must be the doing of those humans, they made him turn into that disgusting form. So he states that if he ever find the person who did that, he will chop them into strips, as he lets out a killing intent, which made Wazi's cheek clench after hearing Kage's statement. Wazi nervously laugh, while he states that their assumption were right. Piggy and him also turned into humans after being hit by that shooting light, while Piggy is just happy to be here. Then they suddenly transformed back into humans, and it seems like the curse's duration is over, but this sudden transformation made Piggy lost her fruit as she cries for it, while Kage is also crying his lungs out, weirding everyone out, to which Bayu sighs and explain that it can't be helped, because Kage is an idiot and can't change back to his monster form. This surprised Wazi, so he asks if it is possible to change back to their monster form. She responds that, it is possible, and she asks to not tell her that they can't do it either. Wazi explained that they have never tried it before, so he asks how does she transform back into a monster. So she demonstrated, by tossing her cigar into the air, and willingly change, just like that, which they were amazed by it. 
and while Piggy also transformed back into her monster form before, but that was only because she exhausted all her mana, and he didn't expect they could transform at will. Bayou explained that it's pretty easy, they just have to feel the energy from the shooting star and assimilate it into your body. After that, they will be able to transform at will, as she demonstrates to transform again at will, while Kage still isn't finished crying. Still, Wazi asks him if he can't just do the same thing and transform back, so he stops his overacting and hops back. To answer him, he tells him that it is easy for him to say, and asks if he thinks everyone can feel and control the energy from the shooting star that easily, which he demonstrate that he could, while humbly boasting, saying that he never thought about doing this before and imagined he would be forever stuck as a human, clearly hitting Kage's pride, while on the other hand Wasi was hugged by Piggy's two Piggy. Bayou adds salt to Kage's wound as she states that it's actually not that hard, it's just that he is too stupid, because he doesn't know how to control the mana inside his body properly. The mana from the shooting star and the mana inside his body clash with each other, resulting in his current state. He is neither a complete human, nor an entire monster. In the end, he can't use the full power of either form. Kage couldn't let his image be ruined just like that. So he exclaimed that it's really not as easy as they say, and it's because she is used to controlling her mana. And this kid Wazi has the boost from the king's heritage, and if it's really as easy as they say, he wants to see that girly try it. To which Wazi was enthusiastic to ask Piggy to give it a go, and he says it's really easy and advises her to just think really hard of turning to her monster form. Therefore, she did what he tells to, and squeezes his soul out, while she thinks hard about her monster form, but she failed, which made Kage really happy, and he laughs, since he proved them wrong, but his celebrations was short-lived, when Wazi offered apples to her, so she successfully transformed back into her monster form, as Wazi tells Piggy that she is amazing, Kage's pride was kicked into oblivion, so with no more image to hold on to, he started to scream his lungs out again, which surprised Wazi and Piggy, but Bayou had enough, so she shoots him in head, knocking him out cold, while terrifying Wazi and Piggy at the same time, but before they could react, she told them to relax, since that was a blank. Now that Kage has been dealt with, they can talk about official matters. Bayou talks to his majesty, and as he can see, the Mushroom Kingdom is slowly recovering, but the truth is, the Mushroom Tribe is already gone. Without the accumulation of their tribesmen, this place is actually no different from any other. That's why they need him to lead them to prosperity once again, and only he can bring back their lost tribesmen. Wazi asks how can he do that, to which she decides to just show it to him. Using spore-filled bullets, with hyper-evolution, she shoots the ground, and sprout different kinds of mushrooms, then she explained that these are the spores of different mushroom species that she collected earlier. She places them into bullets that will allow her to grow them back anywhere she needs them instantly. Wasi gets what she is saying, and that they can use spores to grow mushrooms and nurture them until they grow stronger. But, Auntie, since she can do it, he asks why she needs him. She responds that, compared to the 40,000 mushroom species that used to exist, the types of spores she collected are only a drop in the ocean. The only one who can bring them all back is him, his majesty. So he waves his spore manipulation, which makes Piggy ecstatic to get a hit, and calls Bayou Auntie again, as he states that he was able to grow mushrooms with his spores before, but the mushrooms never turned into monsters, to which calling her Auntie really puts a toll on her ego. But still, she responds, he should be able to do it now, because he is now the Mushroom King, he should have the regal spore ability. This made him think, since he doesn't remember seeing an ability like that when he looked at his status, so he assumes his spores automatically became regal spores the moment he became the Mushroom King. Only the regal spore can spawn the most basic mushroom species, Mushroom Monster, which can then evolve into any existing mushroom species. As long as His Majesty continuously grows more and more mushroom monsters, they will gradually evolve and recover the strength of their tribe. This made him determined, so he used Spore Explosion and expect his little mushrooms to come out, but to his surprise, nothing was happening, so he wonders why, and asks if his spores are not effective. Suddenly the system answers his questions and states that a king has many abilities, the player has yet to unlock them all successfully, and asks him to increase the proficiency of his skills. Bayou also clarifies that, although he is now their king, he received the king's heritage not too long ago, 
he still have plenty of room to grow, to which he understands. Then he calls Bayu Auntie again, and asks her if does she have a way to help him gain experience quickly, to which she shove her gun to his face, as she calmly and politely asks his majesty, to call her Bayu not Auntie, Wazi instantly complied, so this made her happy, and regained composure, and she states that of course, she has a way to help him quickly grow, since it is also one of her missions to help his majesty grow stronger. Seeing her calm down, he suggested to just call him Duo M.O. instead of his majesty. She asked why, to which he explained that it is because, he feels like he doesn't have what it takes to be the king of the mushrooms just yet, and that he is still too weak to help the mushroom tribe recover its original strength. But when he grows stronger in the future and can lead the mushroom tribe back to prosperity, it won't be too late to call him your majesty then. And with this speech, he gained a new ability called Righteous Persuasion. While Bayu thinks despite obtaining the power of the king's heritage, he is not arrogant, so if he can maintain this attitude, he will grow into an incredible king one day. Now that Wazi's statement moves her, she tells him that she understands, and calls him Duomo. After that, Wazi asks him what should they do now, at the same time Kage regained consciousness, so he somersault towards Wazi, while saying isn't obvious, they need to take revenge, an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth, they must flatten the humans from the Eye of the Firebane Guild, which made Wazi remember the masked man and asks if he is insane while shouting, because he doesn't want to die yet, but the Savage System has other plans with him, so it congratulates the player for triggering a new mission, the Mushroom King's Revenge. Hit that like button and thanks for watching.